Okay, this first uh, screencast overview will be on the Indus Valley Civilization. This is the first of the major human civilizations that we're going to be exploring in world history in our Unit 1 on South Asia. So the Indus Valley, the first thing I want to mention about this is that the Indus Valley is located right in the center of your screen here. It's the Indus River, um, and it kind of spreads out through what would be modern-day Pakistan and northern India. It's along this, this river valley and in this general region that civilization first emerges in South Asia. Just to give you some context, however, uh, the other green areas you see on your map, uh, to the far left in Egypt, and then next in what would be known as Mesopotamia in the Tigris and Euphrates River Valley, and then in the far right in China in the Yellow and Yangtze River Valleys, those would also be early civilizations, or what we would call early river valley civilizations. But since we're starting with the unit on South Asia, we're going to be focusing on the center. So I just wanted to give you a spatial and geographic orientation uh, of this region. If you were to zoom in a little bit closer, this is the Indus Valley kind of up close geographically. It spreads throughout, as I said, modern day Pakistan and northern India. And around 2600 to 1900 BCE, the Indus Valley civilization was at its most mature and its most thriving. And it's important to realize here, it's not just the Indus River that's fueling all of this, but all of the tributary rivers that flow into it from throughout northern India and Pakistan. This was uh, sufficient enough to support, support a complex and organized society, aka a civilization. So I want to raise the question and then kind of answer it immediately. Uh, why might river valleys act as incubators or kind of starters um, for a civilization? Uh, one of the explanations kind of put forward to this is that river valleys have fresh water, natural to any human settlement. They also provide natural fertilization of soil, which allows agriculture to thrive, and thus you have the calories essential for supporting human and animal life. Uh, so that's one of the reasons, or several of the reasons, that the Indus Valley is going to thrive like other river valley civilizations. Uh, settlements can be seen through the archaeological record in the Indus River Valley as early as 4000 BCE. Uh, so people are living there long before you have a complex and organized thriving civilization. What is found in the archaeological record? What's found in these early human settlements? Well, you see the beginning of the domestication of crops and livestocks plants and animals uh, being developed to grow in mass amounts to feed large amounts of people. Things like wheat and barley and cotton. The Indus civilization, for instance, is going to be the first to really cultivate cotton for clothing. Uh, there's evidence of trade networks, and this is established by archaeologists and anthropologists by finding different tools and pottery and other items in, uh, across large distances uh, demonstrating trade. Uh, there's evidence of mud brick buildings, so sort of increasingly complex construction. Mountainous surroundings, which kind of give the Indus Valley a natural protective barrier uh, that um, keeps them safe from outside invasions and perhaps uh, outsiders wishing to do violence. This isn't the case in other civilizations, such as in Mesopotamia, where violence uh, spreads and engulfs the entire re region quite regularly. The early phase of this civilization getting off the ground is around 3300 to 2800 BCE, and this is only going to accelerate. They reach their peak around 2600 to 1900, as we saw. This is some of the early script and um, uh, uh, artwork, you could say also, of the Indus Valley civilization, which for the archaeological record still hasn't been decoded in any big and meaningful way. What are the resources of the Indus Valley, just so you have a general overview? Well, you can find things like copper and precious stones. Copper is going to be really essential to the ancient and, and uh, uh, early agricultural world because it can be easily found in cliffs, it can be molded pretty easily, and it's going to be the first type of metal uh, that's going to make tools on a mass scale. Later on, copper gets added to things like tin, and you get the beginning of bronze and stronger forms of metal. Plentiful water and timber supplies. There are forests that you can chop down to make wood structures. 
Uh, it's the first known civilization, as I mentioned, to cultivate cotton for cloth. It has a protective barrier in the outside, two mountain ranges, the Himalayan mountain ranges in the far north and the Hindu Kush mountain range in the west. Uh, the Indus Valley civilization also has uh, some interesting uh, weather and climate patterns, which is the monsoon winds. Monsoon winds are seasonal wind patterns that come in uh, off the Indian Oceans, and these were captured by early merchant vessels, ships that would go out into the Indian Ocean and be able to travel because they had a predictable regular wind pattern. Uh, the Indus Valley Civilization also has some emerging urban centers. You see the beginnings of cities, complex cities that can support thousands and thousands of people. How are they able to do this? Well, one of the explanations for why they're able to do this is they have increasing use of irrigation. Irrigation, as we mentioned in a previous lesson, is going to be the capturing and directing of water for the purpose of growing crops. Once you can irrigate and get water to your uh, plants, you can have higher crop yields. You can grow more food, more calories, which means more people. The two big city-states um, of the Indus Valley Civilization are called Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro. Uh, these are the sites of two big archaeological ex uh, uh, excavations that have been going on really since the 1920s. What are some things that have been found in the Indus Valley as I just kind of complete this overview? Uh, you see the standardization of objects. Uh, you see things like bricks, pottery, tools, all made with uniformity. They look the same as the others that you find, which means a complex society had to organize the production of these things. So it's a sign of, of being sophisticated and a sign of being advanced that you can have uniform bricks and pottery and tools. There's an uh, uncertain authority system uh, in the Indus Valley civilization. We don't know a whole lot about who was in charge. Is it military rule? Is it um, a religious rule? Right now, the kind of best speculation seems to be that maybe priest kings, some sort of religious political uh, figures would have been in charge or at least had authority in this civilization. Uh, the religious system, we know, like many ancient societies, they are polytheistic. They believe in many gods. Uh, there perhaps may have been the veneration or worship uh, of animals because they're found quite frequently in their artwork. Uh, the cities are uh, organized around a grid pattern, and there seems to be some forethought in how cities are laid out and things are zoned for different purposes. This is a sign of an advanced civilization. If you can look at the city layout and see organization, structure, and planning. Uh, the cities are constructed and the buildings are constructed to cope with things like heat. Uh, in the archaeological excavation, you see buildings with high ceilings, which means they were able to kind of uh, uh, direct uh, hot air um, upwards and thus keep buildings uh, cooler, sort of a pre-modern air conditioner. And the cities, uh, particularly Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro, are connected as part of a larger network of smaller communities. Um, that shows evidence of trade and interactivity and, and sort of a dynamic way of living. And one other element we find in the archaeological record of these cities of the Indus Valley are limited use of weapons. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of evidence that this is a society that is choked with weapons, warfare, and violence. And, and this is unusual. If you look to other river valley civilizations, if you look to Egypt, if you look to Mesopotamia, if you look to China, those four that we saw uh, on the first slide, they're violent societies. Those are societies that are engaged in a lot of warfare. That is not seen in the Indus Valley. So I wanted you just to be able to have a brief overview of the Indus Valley civilization as you complete this lab.